we had a pre-calculus second six weeks mid term last week and this video lesson is a review of that test now for the function f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 7x squared plus 6x what are the approximate coordinates of one of the local minima let's go to our calculator and I'm going to get another page control I we're going to add graph and we're going to graph x to the fourth that's going to be minus 7x squared plus 6x We graph this function, one of the local minima. Well, we, there's one way down here below the view screen, but there's one that we can see right here. To find that minima, we can use trace. Uh, there are different ways to do that. I'm going to just go to menu, six analyze graph, and I'm going to go to two minimum. And it says lower bound. I'm going to just going to set the lower bound here on the left. And lower bound on the right, and this is our minimum, uh, 1.6 comma negative 1.77, and that's going to very closely match our answer A, which we circle in as our correct answer choice. Next problem, two, what are solutions to the equation shown below? Well, we have x times quantity x minus 3 squared times quantity x plus 5 equals 0. And because of something called the zero factor property, we're going to use zero factor property to solve this one. And the zero factor property simply stated is that anything times 0 equals 0. So we can take each one of these factors and set each one of those factors equal 0. So we have that first one x equals 0, and then this x minus 3, x minus 3 is equal to 0, and then we have uh, finally x plus 5 equals 0. Now we need to solve each one of these equations for x, so here x minus 3 equals 0, that's going to be x equals 3, and then x plus 5 equals 0, that's going to be x equals negative 5. So our answers are going to be 0, Three and probably in the order from least to greatest, we're going to start with negative 5. So if the answer choice does not have negative 5 in it, it's a wrong answer. Neither of these answer choices, A, B, or D, have negative 5. So negative 5, 0, 3, C is our only correct answer. Should have been quite an easy problem. The portic function, x to the fourth power, plus 5x cubed minus 8x squared minus 48x has four real zeros. Which zero has a multiplicity of two? And so this fundamental theorem of algebra that the number of zeros, real and non-real, is equal to the degree of the function, which is four. And some of the zeros may be repeated. And so when we have a multiplicity of two, one of those zeros is going to be, at least one of those zeros is going to be repeated. So this would be a correct answer. So we come to our calculator again, we go to control I, we go to add graph, and we enter this function, x to the fourth power, plus 5x cubed, and then minus 8x squared, then minus 48x. Here we graph the function, and the zeros we see are at x equals negative 4, x equals 0, and x equals, looks like, 1, 2, 3. So negative 4, 0, and 3 are, that, that would be our zeros, and the zeros at, at 0 and at 3 have a multiplicity of 1 because they have crossed the x-axis, but negative 4, negative 4, the function just bounces off that x-axis 
that is indicative of a even number multiplicity. And so at negative 4, that's going to be where our multiplicity is 2. Problem 4, which following describes the possible end behavior of a polynomial of odd degree? Well, for a polynomial of odd degree, we need to either do one of two things. We need to start low and end high. So that's a possibility. Or start high and end low. And so the, the limits have to be opposite. One as x approaches. So we're looking one for opposite signs. So here at C, they're the same. Infinity, infinity, not odd. Uh, here we have, let's see, we have negative infinity, negative infinity, uh, and then here's the throwaway answer. Okay, it's going to be D because the limit as x approaches infinity is negative infinity, so that would be this purple one right here. And then limit as x approaches negative infinity of fx equals infinity, so that would be this one here. D is our correct answer. Problem number five. Uh, use the graph of the polynomial function below, which uh, is not a factor of x fifth plus x fourth minus 3x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. Well, the factors you find where the zeros are, so the zeros we can write down as x equals negative 2. That's this one on the left. x equals negative 1. That's the second one here. And on the right side we have x equals. Um, x equals 2. And so, um, just kind of looking at this, the 0 would be for x we have to solve for 0. So the factor is going to be x plus 2 that is associated with x equals negative 2. And then, for this x equals negative 1, the factor associated is going to be x plus one. Okay. So the factor x plus 1 is associated with this 0 right here, that circle in purple. And then for x equals 2, that factor is going to be x minus 2. And so, which, use the graph point, which is not a factor of this. So x minus 2 is a factor, x plus 2 is a factor, x plus 1 is a factor, x minus 1 is not a factor. Okay, the trick is that the thing crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 1, but the factor associated with that is x plus 1. Okay, so it's kind of a trick question, and if you answered uh, D instead of, let's see, instead of C, you were tricked, and with this not that kind of complicates the issue also. For the following uh, division problem, what would be a proper synthetic division setup? Well, we have to have all the placeholders in. So we got to have, we have x cubed plus 0x squared plus 2x minus 6. So we have to have that placeholder with the 0. And D does not have that, nor does A. And so now we have to find the right division because we have uh, negative 3 over here with pro answer C and 3 over here. What we have to look for is a 0. So x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals 3. So 3 is what goes on the outside here. That answer B is our correct answer. That should have been pretty easy. Next, 7. Uh, the function g of x is graphed below is a cubic function based on the graph which the following statements is true. Uh, g of x has one real zero and two non-real zeros. Well, d is not correct because you can't have, you have to have at least one, we touch the x-axis. Uh, c, g of x has three real zeros. Well, I only see one zero, right? Looks like it only touches the x-axis over here at the left. So that's probably wrong. Uh, g of x has two real zeros and one non-real zero. Well, that's really kind of a possibility, but this answer A is correct. 
because you have the one real zero where the thing crossed the x-axis and then we don't see the thing touch the x-axis again. So A is our correct answer for problem seven. Eight, the, the table below has, you have patent applications since 1980 with X being the number of, of years since 1980. And so they give instructions on how to set up the quadratic regression. Using quadratic regression, predict during what year the number of patent applications will reach uh, uh, 450,000. And it gives you some hints. What I did is I went in earlier, entered this, let's see, control. Okay, I entered, and so we have right here, I entered all the figures. In this, I put year and patents. And the patents, I rounded off to the nearest uh, integer, where there were decimals, because that's going to give us a close enough approximation. Then I'm going to go to Control I, and I'm going to get a add data and statistics, and we get the points kind of strewn out. I'll press Tab, and we're going to pick on the x axis year. So down here, pick year. That lines us out. And then on the y axis, we're going to pick number of patents and press Enter. So this thing here, this, this curve thing, looks like it could kind of be a quadratic situation. What I'm going to do is uh, take the uh, run of quadratic regression. And for that, we go to press menu, analyze, six regression, and then show quadratic, which is four. And we have this function right here. So we can set this function. We have 0.45x squared plus 0.98x plus this y-intercept of 100, 115 approximately. So we could run this way, but we can go to, I think we can go to uh, analyze, and we can go to graph trace, A. And so here we are, we find ourselves on the graph trace. We can just go to the right. And so we're just going up the, up the graph here. And we're interested in when patent applications will exceed uh, 450,000. Well, we see here at year, okay, at year 26.9, we have 467,000. If I go one to the left, I have 26.5. 400, oops, there we go, 26, okay, 26.03, we have 443,000, so 26, that's going to be years since 1980, that's going to be year 2006, so that's going to be our best answer, which is our answer choice C. Next, we go on to problem 9. Which of the following divisions will produce a remainder of 13 over x minus 1? All these have, have uh, divisors of x minus 1. And what we could do, I didn't see many people do that on our test, but I saw a lot of people doing synthetic division, which is fine. But you can also do use the remainder theorem. So if we have a, a divisor that we say is x minus k, in this case, in this case we have k equals 1, we can substitute 1 and all these things up here, I mean all these dividends on top, and we can find out which one of these equals 13. That'll be our answer. So here if we go to our, our uh, answer D, we have F of K, which is going to be F of 1, it's going to be equal to 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 5. Well, here we're going to have, that's going to be 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5. That's going to be 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 5 is 11. So that would be a remainder of 11 for answer choice D, not correct. Now for answer choice C, 
I'm going to put f of k equals, we're going to have 2, 1 cubed, minus 5 times 1, plus 16. So that's going to be 2 minus 5 is negative 3, plus 16 is 13. And we could go to the uh, to synthetic division and come up with the same thing. We'd have, uh, if we work that out, we're going to have 1 here, and we're going to have 2, 0, negative 5, 16. Bring down the 2. Okay, that's 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And then 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 16 plus negative 3 is 13. So we get a 13 remainder here also. C is our correct answer. The next problem, 10. How many discontinuities is the function uh, 2x squared plus 9x plus 4 over 2x plus 6 have? So you're basically, what you're looking at is, uh, there, there are different ways we could do this. We could graph this and, and see, and, and there is really at most one discontinuity, and if we could solve that denominator, we know that 2x plus 8 cannot equal 0, right? So if we solve this, we have 2x cannot equal negative 8. So dividing by 2, we have x cannot equal negative 4. So we have, look at A and D are the same answer, none, right? Well, infinite discontinuity, that's a junk answer. So then you have one discontinuity. Guys, it should have been a real easy problem. 11, which of the following correctly describes the end behavior of function below? And so we're going to have our end behavior is going to be from negative infinity to negative infinity. And that's, you just have to look in this thing for negative infinity, negative infinity. Okay, the only place we see negative infinity, negative infinity for both limits toward infinity and negative infinity is in that choice B. Should have been a real easy one. Problem 11. Sean was asked to graph a function with the following characteristics. Uh, it's a polynomial of degree 3 and the leading coefficient is less than 0. Well, the only thing here with a degree 3 is when you answer choice B. I think that's a leftover from last test. I think we scored. Didn't take it out of there. 13. In Mr. Nguyen's technology class constructed a catapult to compete in the county's annual pumpkin launch. So uh, basically what you're going to do is put in the equations and see which one best matches the data here. And I'm going to put in answer choice A. I'm going to put control I, add graph. And for answer choice A, we have y equals 43.63. We're going to have x to the power of negative 1.12. And then we, we graph, can graph the function. And we're looking here. We can see enough of the graph to see in quadrant 1 sort of a negative correlation and you further and so we're going to have to the right of the y-axis negative correlation so going back to our answer choices uh, we see that we do have a negative correlation here so a looks like that could be right and if we look at these and we can further look at the table view if we go to control t we see a table view, and the table values do not do not exactly match the, uh, the table in the problem. If we look at p of these t values, but it's the only thing that's that's anywhere at all close. So a is is our best answer. We circle that as correct. 
last problem, uh, 14, describe the type of discontinuity of fx equals x squared plus 2x minus 8 over 3x minus 6. And so uh, we could work this out and, and graph it. Well, actually, I'm going to do that in a second. But let's algebraically see if we can work this out. We can factor, try to factor the denominator. It's going to be a common factor in the denominator of 3 times 20x minus 2. So in the numerator, if we have removable discontinuity, which we're going to probably have, we're going to factor out that x minus 2. So what times x minus 2 is going to be equal x squared plus 2x minus 8? Well, that's going to be x plus 4. And if we multiply these two uh, linear binomials together, we're going to end up getting this x squared plus 2x minus 8. So x minus 2 over x minus 2 cancel, meaning that this discontinuity of x minus 2 equals 0, not equal 0, so x not equal 2. This discontinuity of x equals 2 is going to be a removable discontinuity. And so that's our discontinuity, and when we graph the function, okay, we put to control I, add graph, we have x squared let me make sure I get this right here x squared plus 2x minus 8 and then we have in the denominator 3x minus 6 graph the function and we see a line we don't see any break or discontinuity anywhere do we this looks just like a line in fact if we go back to our um, go back we're going to end up with with uh, x plus 4 over 3 so that's going to be x over 3 plus 4 over 3 so that's what this looks four thirds. That's going to be our y intercept. We don't see any break, or so we automatically know based on this graph, based on trusting what we see on this graph, that we do not see an infinite discontinuity of vertical asymptote. We do not see a jump discontinuity. The only possibility is removable or no discontinuity. And if we go to our table view and press Control T. We see at x equals 2, the function is undefined. And not seeing at x equals 2 any break on the graph, we are given to understand that this represents that we have a non, we have a removable discontinuity at x equals 2. So that should have been too hard. I hope this review has been helpful to you. Good luck. Learn from your mistakes if you made any. And thanks for viewing.